from the dark depths of purgatory, the war-torn fields of revolution, the haunted streets of Sleepy Hollow, and now to the very nation that he helped build right to the capital. This is the Headless Podcast. I am, of course, your host, Master of the Macabre, Wolfman Zack. And what's that over the hill? Well, it's the pipes, the drum, and the Christine Piccolo. I'm doing good. So, of course, this week's episode is entitled... What is it entitled, Christine? Do you have it in front of you? Heads of State. That's right. Yep. It was it was awesome. I loved it. Um, of course, we, we, get, we get Ichabod House Hunting. Oh, my God. That was so funny. I, I'm telling you, it's, it's, I feel bad he's living in squalor, and I kind of miss the cabin. I miss him there. It'd be kind of funny if the neighborhood actually does start to gentrify. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, and it, it, it's, I mean, I understand that he has to have a place to live. I was wondering, he must have been staying with uh, Jenny is the only thing I can think of. In the camper? Yeah, but wasn't she there after he got to D.C.? Yeah, so I don't know. Well, okay, he was held prisoner. Right. So... And then... Oh, well, all right, there's enough... Okay, so maybe... Yeah, okay, that's enough. So maybe... Yeah, there isn't close enough that he could have been staying with Jenny. Yeah. Second episode, we saw him hanging out at the camper. Mm. And so, yeah, so now he has his own pad. And I loved oh, the- when he was trying to uh, figure out the Ikea. <laughs> I, oh, yes. I, I was like, yeah, that's that's the way it is when I try and do something like that. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> it's like crazy although where is he getting money from thank you i know they haven't made that clear i mean he i think he was making money from i mean he because you would make money a civilian consultant and he and he has um documents but i just there's no reason for him to be making money now well yeah and i mean well originally last well last season he supposedly was, you know, working uh, in the historical society. Remember, or whatever historical. Well, wait, wait. wait. I, he wasn't. I don't think he was work. That's not. I don't know if that's. Is that a job though? I think he was. That's like the kind of thing where you're like, oh, I'm helping the local community. Oh, I don't know. Well, yeah, you're probably right. I mean, he was basically Abby was supporting him, and then and now I don't think he's getting paid. The only thing I can think of is like maybe Jenny. Uh, you know, has been wheeling and dealing and, you know... Oh, wait, doesn't... Well, here's an interesting idea. Um, with Joe dead, maybe Jenny has Corbin's money. Oh, that's true. You that know? would be... I know what? That could be a great way to explain it, like, in two seconds. Oh, I, Joe le- left me his money, blah, 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 and, you know... They, I mean, it's 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 a cop, but it would be, let us move on. Yeah, I think they should make that clear, actually. I mean, now it's too late. They finished filming, so it's done, but... That would well, maybe be, they, yeah. I mean, they might. Who knows? Maybe they did think of that. Uh, well, well, we can interview. We can interview the a- the actor. He can be com- he can be vague, and we can guess then. The yeah, of- exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's a good question for Lindy. If we can get her on the show, I'm working on it. That'd be gr- oh god, that would be such a get if we get her. So I know. Yeah, and uh, just this this oh Ichabod, this, oh, and he's gonna be Wells' neighbor. <laughs> That is hilarious. I mean, he's got, he's got, he, he's trying to do the whole bromance thing. Um, and it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, Joe. I mean, I wish, God, I just wish he wasn't killed off. I really liked the, the thing with Joe because, you know, they were all connect, interconnected and everything. And obviously Jake wants a, a bro to hang around with. So. I hope we get a scene. I really do. I know, you know, and I'm hoping, too, we get to see him hang... Like, remember last season, we got to see him hanging out at the bar, you know, having a drink. Oh, you know what we need? This is what we need. We need us because of... Because, see, um, it's always different when you meet new people. Because, of course, Joe and Jenny, they all had the... They, they were just fighting evil, and, they, and they, but they were still crazy. But him, he's totally, he totally fanboys about Crane. I want to see him going, so what was Jefferson like? Yeah, like he, I he just he's just at, what, hey did wash did Franklin really wear his hair like that you know like really stupid like would, the ones we would all ask if we met someone that knew the founding fathers. No, wouldn't it be that would be incredible? And I mean, what, what what was it like going to the bathroom in the seventh? Yeah, what did you use? What did you have to poo out in the like? How did that work? <laughs> like, 
That, that would be a great yeah. scene to have. You know, but, what, what yeah. was it like during the Revolutionary War? You know, how did... I mean, like, I would have so mi a million zillion questions for him if it, you know, if we could just talk to him and pick his brain, you know. And I always love... The fact that, you know, Ichabod, he, <laughs> he he has, it's through his eyes how he saw the Founding Fathers, you know. Right, that's but, what I mean. Yeah. I, 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 there was this one show called, um, oh, God, well, I'm blanking on the name, but it was this really weird time travel like cartoon about going back in time. And there, there was this one episode where they go back in time to the, episode, the Founding Fathers, and the Founding Fathers are all just all, like, beer-drinking frat, frat boys. <laughs> But that's how they want them to be, so they can start up. They're like, let's start a revolution. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I think it was Time Squad, but um, whatever. So, yeah, we get the guys just outright lying. They come on, yeah, what about the sunlight? Oh, sunlight causes cancer. Moving on. Yeah, moving on next. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and Ichabod gets called a hipster. I know that. I love that, though. I used to get called that by an ex, and that's one of the reasons why she's an ex, because I would be like, stop <laughs> calling me that. Because <laughs> yeah, he's not even technically a hipster. Right. Oh, he is a hipster. But, you know, well, my favorite my favorite kind of uh, diss on him was, was uh, it was in, what was it, the last episode, when he's... He's not wearing the ruffles, so his clothing is getting made fun of. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, yeah, because those were hipsters. Yeah, total hipsters. But. <laughs> but. Okay, so we get Dreyfus. And I think this, I think, is a part, and this I was talking to before we started recording. I think him talking to this tech guy is an insight into his motivations. Oh, yeah. Because it sounds like he wants to protect humanity. Well, I don't know, you know, this is the thing. To like bring this up, and you know, it's a big, huge thing. But, uh, but I think it's interesting. You know, the the people, the Illuminati, and all these people. I mean, they they have plans. When they think about their plans and what they want to do, they think like long term. You know, like like that's what Malcolm was saying. Like, you know, a hundred years, a thousand years from now. Uh, but it was really interesting to see him, you know, pick this this poor Tex brain and then diss him. <laughs> it's like, I'm sure he's going to probably uh, launch one of his own little things. Who knows? Yeah. Well, the, the, what what it makes me think of is because um, uh, I mean we we don't obviously we don't know what Dreyfus is plan. I hope it's not something as simple. He just wants to unleash evil and destroy things. But I don't think he is. I I, I think it's it, it makes the thing that bubbles to the, my mind firsthand is uh, Doctor Doom. Is Doctor Doom? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. He, he wants to... He, is, believe, he genuinely believes him ruling the world is good for the world. He doesn't want to destroy the world. He wants to rule it. And he believes he'll, it's good for us. But he's willing to do whatever it takes to get to that point. Right. Well, think about it. I mean, the third if this is the third tribulation in the show i mean we've had two tribulations the third tribulation as far as the book of revelations is concerned is the antichrist and the antichrist is supposedly some big wig with a lot of money and a lot of power who comes in and like takes over and he's and everybody you know is like boy is he now huh yeah i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave out the topical commentary on that one uh, but <laughs> yeah well we'll see i Anyway, I'm not even going to go there. But, no, we're not. No, no, we're not doing that. No, 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 um, no. But, but, I mean, it's an interesting thought if that's what they're doing. And, you know, when I think about it, when that, that's sort of how I looked at it. And, yeah, well, it, it well, and we got to wonder, is his second command, maybe his second command is the Antichrist, maybe it's the devil, maybe it's the serpent. Well, yeah, I, I'm wondering, who is Job? I mean, he's got these snake eyes, reptilian eyes. Uh, and Wait, is his name Joe or Job? Job, J O B E, B as in boy E. Job. It's Job. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I know. And so I'm like, oh my god. And then I'm wondering, you know, is he really servicing Malcolm or is he using Malcolm? You know what I mean? Well, like, I, it's hard to tell because I, I, obviously he's supernatural and um, Dreyfus is human, but I still, even though that's the dynamic, I can't see Dreyfus being manipulated. Like, I, I can see them working together, but it, but again, 
he seems to be taking orders from Dreyfus. Yeah. Yeah, seems to be, but it's going to be interesting to see. I wish that we would get more than just a couple of minutes. So far, we've only gotten maybe six minutes total. But, uh, I'm worried because we don't get a lot of episodes this season. I know. Well, that's the thing, and I'm like, oh, my God, now they're doing 13 episodes, and we need 18. It's like, you know, unfortunately. Well, hopefully hopefully we'll get a, number, a season five. Um, uh, the writers, so a lot of people are asking, and the writers tweeted out that, um, that they're hopeful, but, you know, they're hoping for a season five, but they don't know either. Uh, well, the thing about this show is, um, it lo- again, it lost a lot of fans after the second season, and the only way to get it, it will never be what it was. It just can't. Oh, no. They lost it. They you, lost that. You have to look at it as a completely new show. I mean, yeah. and even, I mean, I know, you know, season two was a hot mess, and uh, season, I actually liked season three. I just didn't like the season finale. I mean, it was a season hot mess. Season three was a rebuilding season. That's what it's got to be looked at. Right, exactly. But, you know, you have to just, you have to, I, and it's so funny because on Twitter, you know, I a lot of a lot of the ladies that you know or girls that I was talking to, of course, they don't watch it anymore, and I get DMs from some of them, and and you know, and they're they're just they're just so devastated, and and I totally get that. I mean, and I do miss Abby. I mean, it was the com- chemistry between Abby and Ichabod, just as partners, even it was just they were just so symbiotic, and now. You know, but I, I'm just looking at it as a new show, and and actually, I've I've really liked it. I mean, I don't know, I'm having fun with it. Yeah, uh, and so and we 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 see headless, and apparently, I wonder if they're ever gonna. I don't I don't care if they don't, but because we see headless gets an upgrade, I wonder if they'll ever address it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, this is the thing. I mean, and I liked I loved that little flashback that they did. You know, when when uh, Ichabod was explaining, you know, about the headless horseman. Oh yes. That was fantastic because I was like, oh my god, it brought back all the nostalgia for season one. Um, but I I just I feel like now he's considered quote the the horseman the, the basically death. Forget if they're not doing the quote four horsemen of the apocalypse anymore. They I think they've sort of designate him as death anyway and so whenever he comes on you just you just don't know but uh but it was just epic when he when you see the motorcycle guy you know and i was like oh my god and then he just and then he turns into the that was epic when he turns into the when he morphs back into himself i love that scene that was just fantastic well it's probably a good way to address the fact that people are gonna like it's so he can walk around and i'm fine with that because people would notice a headless red coat on a horse with red eyes oh yeah of course and i mean like in the middle of dc it's like right uh, it, you, you know and i mean if you notice that well although you know he was out and about in sleepy hollow too but um but mo- but but as that went on, he would be mostly, you know, sort of in the wooded areas and, you know, his little, anyway. But, I, yeah. I just love when his, when his uh, head popped off. That was epic. Oh, oh, God. I was like, oh, my God. And wasn't it interesting? He was after the president, just saying. Yeah, well, uh, and I was, when I saw that, I'm like, why would he, and then when they expl- the explanation makes, it works for me. Yeah, exactly, exactly, anyway, there's so many subliminal messages, it, it, it's kind of cracking me up. Yeah, and again, yeah, because it's funny, because this ties in more to the original legend of the Headless Orson, because he's always searching for his head. Exactly, exactly, and who knows, I mean, maybe, maybe he'll use another disguise with somebody else's head. <laughs> and you know what, what happened to the head? His skull. It blew up, didn't it? I can't. I don't remember. No. They I could have. I, I could have sworn it blew up. No, they tried to do that. Remember, they tried to do it. They couldn't. I can't. No, when, no. When he when he used when he used the when he some. I, I'll go back and watch. It, but I could have sworn last season when he used the headless on Pandora, it blew up. Maybe you know. I can't I'll go back it. and watch. I'll I'll check and I'll yeah, know by I next week. I can't believe I'm blanking. Here I am. I'm, I, I, seen these episodes but you know what i i haven't watched the finale episode except you know when it aired and i had to watch it one other time when we were trying to do our our other uh finale convo it never happened but uh 
So yeah, I, I don't know that episode hardly at all <laughs> anymore. But anyway. I did like the line when they were trying to, when he asked him, can you build this? And she says, future me already has. When what? She, when um, Wells says to Gadget Girl, hey, yeah. can you build an RF single? And she's like, future me already has. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great line. I really like that. I know. I like her. Some people, I, I've read some reviews that are saying they, they don't really like her, but I like her. She's got spunk. And the thing is, is like, even though she, she's, she has seen these things happen, you know, supernatural and everything. I think she she's slowly going to get back on board. I, well, I think that's the they got to get her on board for Supernatural. That's the I think that's the problem people have with her. Although I did like her. It's, it's an interesting thing because it's the questions people wonder, like oh how. And if if you look at the scene with Headless later, he is breathing, like oh. his chest is going in and out. Right, right. Got to sometimes take everything with a grain of salt, right? <laughs> yeah. Although, uh, apparently the DC Public Works people don't have the sharpest eye, because no none of them noticed a magical totem on the underside of a manhole cover. Oh, I know. Well, I, actually, I, I can believe that, because, you know, they're not, they're not uh, looking for it. You know what I mean? I know, I know. It's a nitpick. I just wanted to make yeah. the comment. Yeah. So, it turns out there's these mystical rooms probably protecting around the White House and stuff. That's what stopped Headless. Right. And it, tur and it turns out to have a connection to Benjamin Banneker, who I've looked it up, was a real guy. And and funny thing is, there really was a fire. I found that out. Yep, there was. And, and m most of his papers and diaries and everything, except for, I think, one, was, uh, was destroyed. And so there's not a lot of information on him, just... Um, which is sad, <laughs> but and he was and he was um, connected to the he had some dealings with the Falling Fathers. Yep. Um, and it's funny because it, it, it's they're not really it, it, apparently there's some uh, discussion about exactly how much he was involved with like with the DC and stuff, but people everyone agrees he was he was a man ahead of his time in a lot of ways. I haven't been able to see exactly. Well, he was self-taught, but yeah. I, I haven't been able to find too much of what he could, like, his, um, mechan if that was true. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, uh, he was a surveyor, and, and I love the fact that he, you know, he sort of had the hand in, in the, um, in the layout of Washington, you know, because remember he had the map, and, and thank you, Ichabod Crane with, with his long hair was back, I was happy. <laughs> As such a bad wig. <laughs> oh, I love his longer hair. Oh, I just think Tom. Oh, his hair is too short now. Anyway. I like his hair. That's his. Well, this is his real hair. This That's is the first time he's hair. ever. Yeah, and and it was when when I got to see him in New York. I mean, his his hair is a little longer than it is in this episode, but um, I don't know. I just I actually got used to the length from season three. Uh, and I understand why he doesn't want to wear the wig. I totally get it. It's hotter than hell in Georgia. I wouldn't want it either. Um, but anyway, it was it was nice to see him in full regalia again in the flashbacks. This is weird. I'm looking it up because uh, I just I was wanted to double check some things. The fire was on the day of his funeral. Yeah, which is very suspect, don't you think? I mean, what what did he have there that somebody? I my feeling is that somebody was covering, trying to cover something up, a government thing. I mean, that's just my theory. I mean, what was yeah. the purpose of it other than that? I mean, it was stupid. Why would you do that? Uh, you yeah. know, why would that happen? It's just kind of suspect. It's it, it's it's more suspect because of the timing of it. You know, during his funeral, it's like okay, well what. What was it? And who knows? Maybe those papers didn't didn't you know get destroyed. Maybe maybe somebody confiscated them and then set it on fire to make it seem that way. We don't know. Uh, I you never know. Well, I'm looking. Yeah, so I have looked it up, and it looks like his mobile work. Was, I I haven't seen much on. It. I mean, of course, they add a lot of missiles for the show, but we finally get the team finding out about Ichabod, and I kind of like that they well, just dealt with it. Well, oh my god, did you see Diana's face? She was pissed. I was like, oh my god. And, you know, it was it was only a matter of time. I mean, the fact that Alex 
she's so uh, scientifically methodical and stuff. It reminded me a little bit about the Bones episode, you know, when they kind of figured out, wait a minute, uh, you know, they were questioning, uh, you know, how old or who who Ichabod was, and and uh, and it's and I think that it's important anyway, because I kept thinking, you know, he's got to be able to tell Diana. Uh, because Molly is the second witness, how is he going, you know, he has to explain everything, and, and I liked how they, they, you know, they put it out there, I think they did it in, in, in a good way, mm. and, um, but yeah, she is not happy at all. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just, I just, and I just love how well it's just so happy. I know, he's such a geek. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, a geek, but and I even the him. even I, I'm not completely understanding what the what Gadget Girl did because she's like I tested his clothes or whatever and or his hair. I think yeah. Didn't he t she take a piece of his hair DNA? Did a DNA? Yeah. DNA, but, and apparently she has access to stuff that can test blood. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I know it's a little. I mean, she. I guess she has her own quite quote scientific lab i don't know <laughs> oh and something we saw a lot this episode the which is a staple of the show is the sw a turning upside down shot oh you know len wiseman was the director of the pilot and he did a fantastic job in you know kind of putting a br put, put that sort of like sleepy hollow's brand you know, those upside down shots when things are skewed and um it's I always love when they do that. You know, they kind of um you know, pay homage to I think a lot of the season though, there's been little things here and there from the pilot, uh a lot from the pilot, you know, different things that they've done so far in the, in these first three episodes that have sort of harkened back to the pilot. Um, and, uh, that was one of the things, and, yeah, I'm, I'm glad when they, I, I always love when they use that, and the inverted, uh, camera, whatever, shot. Yeah. <laughs> now, I did like, in the Banneker scenes, when, because they, ad he, they addressed, because it's something that a lot of people have talked about, it's like, the family fathers are like, oh, yeah, we're gonna be free, except for the blacks! <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, yeah, that's the thing, too. It's so hard because the Revolutionary War was incredible because, you know, we fought against England. We didn't want, we wanted to have our separate government, you know, uh, from, from them, from uh, the king. And um, it sucks that it took another, what, 100 years <laughs> at least before the Civil War occurred, a little, almost 100 years later. Uh, for the Civil War to occur, so that so that you know everybody that is an American, no matter the color of your skin, could you know rejoice in in America. And so that's kind of a touchy subject, you know, when you're talking about the Revolutionary War. And well, stuff. he even Banner even says like if it's not addressed, it will tear this union apart. Exactly. He, that's a, like a foreshadowing. And it's, it's I mean we could talk all day just on that, but. Oh, yeah. It's it sucks for like some of the like some, of course many of the founding fathers w wanted to and wanted uh, all men to create equal to include black Americans right. but a lot of people like like they wouldn't have the, like w one account is the southern states said if you free the slaves we will not fight the British yeah and that was horrible I, I, anyway it's such a dark that part of the Revolutionary War and founding of our, of our country is such a dark chapter, you know, and it, and it's sad because uh, it shouldn't have been that way, but, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that we had to create our own government and, and, and it had to be done. It's just a shame that they couldn't have done it in the reverse, you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't it have been awesome if they had done the Civil War first and Freed, freed all the black, you know, all the African Americans and everything like that, and then goes to the Revolutionary War. But anyway, so they find out that actually Dreyfus. I know it's funny. I almost want to go back to the black, the, the black market auction with Joe to see if they're actually. I know there obviously isn't a Banneker there, but I almost want to go back. Like, was it there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and can I just say I absolutely love the fact that. Jenny is, like, so educated with all these different, you know, cultures and different, and, you know, the, the, what is it, the, 
the black market and she knows how to, she knows how to do so much and i think that we don't she gets underestimated a lot i feel yes and so we we move on and we kept the scene with dreyfus and he's such a dick isn't he oh my god i love how the surf i'm just gonna call him the surfer because that's what i think he is he's like about the three he's like what he's like shut up <laughs> I know. Well, it, it, the thing that I don't get, too, is why is he so interested in Ichabod? Why is he, you know, what is that? Like, first of all, how does he even know about Ichabod? Why has he been following up on, on keeping tabs on him? Uh, and, you know, part of me is, like, wondering, I mean, I think, I think it was established that uh, Ichabod, you know, he knew that, that whoever it was was holding him, uh, in DC. I well, mean, again, then I'm they're not really clear on. They haven't really addressed because I'm still very confused about that aspect of the new season. Like, because we got it from um from the from Father Mills, you know, from like yeah, he said they're good Ezra. people in Washington's whatever. They, they they haven't really addressed that and or how much and what Dreyfus' connection to them is. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and I'm still wondering if we're going to see Walters at some point. I mean, he was supposedly part of this whole, you know, there's a still... And we have no of, idea if Walters was good or bad. We don't know. Well, I mean, all I, I considered him to be a bad guy because he killed Nevins. You know, he got the he got the nine sacred... But, but see, is, that's, that's a gray area because it was Nevins. Well, yeah, because Nevins was obviously a bad guy. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, I don't know. And and what happened to that map? And are they going to bring that up again? I don't know. And I'm so mad I didn't get a chance to ask the writers when I saw them. But anyway. Yeah, and 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 here's the question. And this is DC. Where are the Masons? Yes, thank you. I know. Well, now I'm. I have a feeling that you know the stone that um, the stone whatever that Malcolm recovered. What if this all has to do with that? I mean, what if there's like, I mean, they, he said that there are several of these stones or tablets or whatever the heck it is. So there's I think several. He, did he of, say talisman or talisman. what did he call? Yeah, no, did I he think said, he said talisman stones, was it? Talisman. Something like that. But, I mean, we know that there's several of them and what does he need them for? And does it have a connection to the Freemasons and was... Ma is Malcolm a part of the Freemasons at some point? I mean, how else? Why? I guess I just don't understand. If if you're not a, if he if he's not a Freemason, how in the heck does he know that Ichabod is a witness? I mean, he obviously knows that. Um, and uh, I, I I'm thinking. And wasn't there? Didn't he mention like have they found the second witness or? You know, he, he knows they're looking for the second witness. We need more on Malcolm I'm in the background and figuring out what the heck his deal is. Yeah, cause I, and of course, uh, Joe, because, well, it's it's just, again, is he who's in charge of what? Because he doesn't like that Dreyfus used, is using Ichabod to trap the horsemen. Right. But he doesn't say you're not, he never tells him what to do. Right. What does Malcolm want with the headless horseman? Well, I think that's just uh, it's uh, just like amassing an army because that's a pretty good thing to have in your pocket. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, now they talk. They talk about J Street. The thing about this. Oh, and we get a little. We get Jenny brought Greek fire. Even though we didn't. I hope we get to see her use that. I know. I love that Greek fire stuff. <laughs> Thought it was cool. <laughs> And we also say with Molly, they got rid of her emo bangs. Got rid of what? That, uh, well, you got to remember when we first met her, she her hair was like the emo bangs from the South Park kids because she kept oh, flipping yeah. it. <laughs> well, I think they put her when she had a headband on or something. I think this episode. Um, but I, you know, it's it's I I feel bad for Diana because I think and I think it's important that Jenny um, is. Jenny, I think, is going to be the one that's going to have to, you know, I guess, guide Diana through this whole witness thing. Because Diana just wants to ignore the whole thing, or think she can, by ignoring Ichabod and, you know, the gang. Uh, she thinks that 
that it's going to protect Molly, but in the end, I really don't think so. It's the, it's the connection between Ichabod and Molly that is going to, I think, protect them all. I mean, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, I'm, and well, the thing, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I just hope they don't do the thing like something like she's always like it's because she's a child, like she's always in danger or whatever. Like I hope that's not the central premise. Although it's a, it's again it's not a long season order, so who knows? Right. I don't know. I mean, the other thing I what I'm I'm also wondering is I mean, are, are do you think she, do you think they'll trans somehow transfer the the witness uh, soul to Diana? I don't. I, I, I just so many things. I, I still wonder if they're gonna like maybe even if, like if anyone's gonna get resurrected or. Or what? But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. You know. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. We see Headless apparently has a collection of heads. Yeah. <laughs> Which is he's. It's like a wig. It's like a bunch of wigs. You know. He's got a whole. He's got a whole collection he can choose from. <laughs> Which? Who do I want to be today? <laughs> right. I know it's funny, I want, because it's something that's not, it doesn't need to be addressed, but you would think, because obviously the head's on the scene from the first attack, you think someone would, someone would go, um, this thing is, this head's been dead for like a week, what the hell? I know. I wonder if they'll address it all the fact, like, like, I wonder if they're going to try to, like, just not talk about the fact that Headless was a man, I wonder if they're going to try to build him up as this just demonic entity. Yeah. That was that's interesting you bring that up because while when I was watching I was thinking that I'm like I wonder if he's gonna call him Abraham and I wonder if you know he if if Ichabod was gonna I mean Ichabod kind of gave you know the uh, abbreviated version of of who Headless was but you know he he didn't, never mentioned Abraham he yeah. never mentioned Abraham and I, you know I I understand that maybe they want to like totally you know separate that whole storyline whatever but well yeah but you know on the other hand I, you know I mean I, I when he was when he was egging him on when Ichabod was trying to lure him into the little <laughs> there, yeah and he's like oh would you like you know don't don't you want this you know he's like showing his neck and I thought for sure he was gonna say Abraham or something Me and, too. He, and he didn't do it and i'm like oh i wonder if i wonder if that's ever going to come up and you know the other thing too is i think i would have ex like it would have been cool if they would have separated abraham from the headless horseman and then just had him coming in as evil you know because now those of us that have been you know watching it since day one um we have that history in our head you know and so it'll be interesting to see if he tells diana that whole that whole thing. I don't think they're going to go there personally. Right, no, I, don't. I am very confused about the layout of J Street. Yeah, I don't, I don't, okay, so they didn't use J because it was the same as the letter I back in colonial times. Okay, so I understand that, but I don't quite understand, yeah, where is it in conjunction to the layout of DC? No, I no, I I don't. I can buy the whole. It's you know, it's, you know, because sci-fi and fantasy has always had like hidden streets. Hidden, I'm, no, I'm talking about like the look of in, once inside. They're like, oh, it's a cul-de-sac. I'm like, that looks like an alleyway. Oh yeah, I don't know. I know apparently there's a lot of urban myths about why there's no J Street. You know. Yeah, I mean, well, it's always uh, there's always some kind of conspiracy theory out there. <laughs> Yeah, well, I like how it's like, okay, we're going to use this to trap Headless, and we're going to move ben Banneker's marker. It's like, um, should we be doing that? I know. Well, I wondered about that, and I, I, I thought, you know, I don't know if that's just the best thing to be doing. And and also, okay, now, we see a shadowy figure move back, and Ichabod says something's not right. Was the shadowy figure Dreyfus and the Serpent or something else? I thought it was something else. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I didn't think it, I didn't think it, it didn't, when I saw it that moment, you know, I just didn't think it was Malcolm or, or Job. I, I thought it was something else. Well, yeah, well, that's what they say. It's like, oh, this was used to trap a uh, demonic entity. And I'm going, then how do you know there's not something in there? Right, right, exactly. Well, we don't know. And especially, okay, so now he's trapped in there, but 
did Malcolm and Job are they able to get him out? I guess. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Because uh, Job said, "I removed Banneker's Sid that he removed it." Oh, okay, he did remove they, it. They probably figured out how to get into J Street forever ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm wondering too. Could J Street that intersection also be like some portal or something? No, I wouldn't be surprised. That could be a great way to address it. But see, I think because I think that's what Dreyfus meant. And I think he fully intended. Ichabod to use J Street to trap it just so he could talk to Headless. Yeah, oh, totally. I mean, he manipulated, he manipulates everything behind the scenes. Totally. Um, for his own, you know, his own, uh, whatever, use, whatever he's going to do with Headless. Oh, by the way, should we talk really quick about Wells' infatuation with Jenny? Oh, my God. I actually think it's kind of cute. It's hilarious. Oh, it's adorable. It's, it's never going to happen, but it's, it's adorable. I know, it's like, okay, Sorry, Jake, but you're you're overreaching, honey. I mean, I love you, but <laughs> but Jenny's way out of your league, dude. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like saying stuff like that because I believe anyone should try for anything. But yeah, no. <laughs> well, he could possibly get her, but not with that approach. Yeah, I mean, I just love when she's like, if you keep looking at me that way, I'm gonna what what, what was the line? I don't know. If you oh keep... God, I, I meant to write it down. I know. Oh my God, I was just like, oh dude, she will eat you up and. Spit you out, dude. <laughs> I think she's too much of a woman for him. <laughs> I don't know if he could handle it. I think he. I think he'd be. I think he'd freeze up if if she actually, you know, gave him a shot. <laughs> I know, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, but I miss my Joe. They were so cute together. Oh, they were. Oh, ah, they'll they'll resurrect somebody. <laughs> they should resurrect him. Come on, send him back. There's a magical way to bring him back. <laughs> So I think Jenny should have to contact Joe somehow, and that's how, we, and you know, we get him for an episode. Oh yeah, so well, well, we'll see what happens. Who knows? And, and so they get they trap. Well, they think they trap Headless, but I, we right. know that he's not trapped. And um, obviously, we Diana finds out that Molly's about the witness, and you know, it's not surprisingly, she's protective of her daughter. But I hope they address this pretty quickly because she—it's like they're going to come for her whether she wants her to be a witness or not. Right. Well, in the new the episode tomorrow, which I'm so excited about, I've seen it. It's awesome. It's the People versus Ichabod Crane, um, and of course, yay, John Noble is back. Woohoo! Um, that it's in an interesting way. Um, there, yes, they, they do, sh they do address, um, I think Diana, yeah, I mean, she's going to get on board, and I think she's going to get on board quicker than they think. There's a, a moment towards the end of the episode that is just amazing, um, and I don't want to tell you anything more than that, but I... Got, I really, really was, like, touched when I saw this moment. It's between Ichabod and Molly. You'll see. Um, and it was a... Th that, that episode is just very interesting all the way around, um, how they did it. And, uh, anyway, you'll you'll like it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I keep looking at the scene with Dreyfus and Hennis. I'm like, wait, where did they come in? Wait, the layout... I'm, like, so confused about J Street. Yeah, I know. They need to, like give us more on that I see my thinking is is that J Street is like I said I think it's a portal or some something like that I felt that the Freemasons knew about and that the Freemason there you know you got to remember you know most of our founding fathers uh, and those that you know drafted the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and everything you know, they were Freemasons, and they're in D.C., and I, I there's so much symbolism that goes on, all, you know, all around D.C., um, and a lot, and it's because of the Freemasons, and so I feel like they need to bring in the Freemasons in this storyline. And what about the Hessians? We never got them back yeah. either. Like, where's that? I mean, they, uh, there were, remember all these sleeper cells? Like, yeah. where's the sleeper cells? And, like, where are these people, these other people that are fighting? I mean, obviously, Diana had no clue what was going on. Um, we do know that, you know, Nevin's, Nevin, I mean, uh, Walters was involved. But who else? I mean, and it, they they haven't fleshed that out 
well at all. Um, and well, and I wonder, like, cause of course we had the president in this episode. I wonder, like, does the president know about, like, is that part of Washington's secrets? Listen, the president doesn't know about anything that goes on. I, I think that's, like, involving, you know, secret societies and all this other stuff. I mean, just even historically in our, in real world, in real world here, I mean, they don't know half the crap that's going on um, behind closed doors. And so I don't think that the president, uh, Madam President, I thought was very interesting. What did you think of that? Yeah, it could mean something, but we'll see. Uh, and, of course, the episode, uh, no, it took it took me to the rewatch to realize that was what he stepped on in J Street. What? Well, apparently, Ichabod gets attacked by the Venom symbiote. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, when he was stepping on that stuff the black stuff right yeah yeah well yeah and then at the end oh my god i gotta say it kind of creeped me out <laughs> goes in his closet and gets whatever <laughs> gets uh transported into 16 it's 1680 i think or something like that it's the 1600s that it goes back to well, it's probably so. Uh, we'll see, we'll see exactly what it is when the episode. But so, oh yeah, overall it's a good episode. Yeah, a lot of good action in it, and I, I and uh, the, the upgrades the headlights. I mean, they're obviously trying to distance themselves from the past, but yeah, I would say I would say it's a good. This is a good episode. Yeah, I mean, I really liked it. For me, it was like there was a lot of action. Um, there was the twistery with uh, Anniker, which I liked as always, um, and. Uh, there's there's little nuances that are coming through and especially with the new characters that I'm liking seeing I, I just I feel like I need more more background on uh, yeah. the baddies and more more background on who exactly is doing what there you know I, I I feel like we oh I hope that they address it we'll see but um but yeah you know I mean it was a fun episode to watch and um you know I say definitely watch it if you haven't seen it yet head to state i think it was written by uh, raven metzner if i'm correct i think i'm correct on that um and uh you know it's interesting i did tweet him just to say you know who came up with the banneker twistery you know how do you and um i think he said joe webb researched you know and doing research and stuff he kind of stumbled upon uh, Banneker, and so then they decided to use it. So it's kind of interesting what they do in order to come up with these twisteries, and um, anyway, I, I just think it's clever. Yeah, I think that sums it up well for this, for me. So I'd like to remind everyone, we're still take, we're still doing a little thing with our fans, and we're looking for suggestions for our new end line. But until then, we'll keep it simple, and don't lose your head. <laughs>